I'm here with Corey Doctorow, and he gave a captivating talk earlier. And uh, for those who weren't able to catch it, I was going to ask if you could uh, tell the people at home the name of the talk so they can catch it later. Yeah, the name of the talk was Disenshittify or Die. Yeah, it was about it was about how platforms are all becoming shitty. They're enshittifying why they're all becoming shitty at the same time, and what we can do to stop it and build a new, better internet that is enshittification resistant. Absolutely, and it was an awesome talk. Oh, well, thank you. Um, and uh, in addition to your public speaking, I also saw that you're a uh, special advisor for the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Yeah, I've been with EFF for more than 20 years. I used to be their European director. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, for someone on the fringe of things that's interested in engaging, what's the best way for them to do that? Well, EFF.org is the place to go and sign up. Um, for nothing, you can get on our mailing list. We'll keep you abreast of things going on nationally and where you live. You tell us what state you're in. We'll stay in touch about that. Um, you know, if you join up, uh, we have a membership program. We also have something called the Electronic Frontier Alliance, which is a network of community groups all across the country. There's dozens and dozens of them that work on issues at the local and state level, and we coordinate among them. Uh, so a lot of uh, model uh, legislation and model uh, uh, local ordinances about things like making sure that the cops have to tell you if they're buying drones and subject that to public review. And those are things that we have uh, uh, helped groups pass successfully in one area and then bring them to other ones. Also stuff on uh, public use of facial recognition and so on. Wow, that's super cool. I'm gonna look that up when I go yeah, home. Yeah, you should. And if, you know, if there isn't one in your area, you can start one. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and to that point, uh, I don't wanna spoil too much of the talk, but at the end, something that caught uh, caught my mind was uh, you were talking about how we don't really get the full news dissemination of what's going on in uh, legislation that really impacts us at a federal level? Yeah. Well, it's mostly, it's not legislation so much as regulation, it's antitrust, mm. uh, which, you know, is a very esoteric area of law at the best of times, but the last 40 years has seen very little action on antitrust. There's a real policy of just YOLO on antitrust, uh, starting with, with Reagan, really, and right up until the current administration, Democrats and Republicans, they really didn't think there was any reason to bother enforcing it. And as a result, we've ended up with these monopolistic sectors. You know, one company makes all the eyeglasses. Uh, they also own uh, every eyeglass store in your in your hometown, like uh, Lens Crafters and Sunglass Hut. They make more than half the lenses. They're every brand you've ever heard of, Dolce & Gabbana, Coach Oakley. It's all one company. Cheers. They make, and uh, they've raised the price of glasses a thousand percent in the last decade. Right? There, there's three uh, cartels uh, that control all of the world's uh, sea freight. And, um, you know, for years, regulators were like, guys, I know you get these economies of scale when you make the ships bigger, but, like, won't one of them eventually get caught in the Suez Canal? And, the, you know, and the companies were like, ah, what the fuck do you know? You don't, you don't run a shipping line. Uh, there used to be 40 wrestling leagues, and now there's one wrestling league. The weird, Trumpy, rapey owner of it reclassified all of his workers as uh, contractors and took away their health insurance. And all the wrestlers you grew up watching are, like, dying of their work-related injuries and oh my begging God for pennies on GoFundMe. So monopolies, they're everywhere. And they're especially there in tech. You know, the web is now five giant websites filled with screenshots of text from the other four. Uh, memorable phrasing of Tom Eastman. And it is through that monopolization, that cartelization, that we see regulators no longer able to do their job because the companies they're supposed to be regulating are bigger than the government. Um, and we see companies being able to Bigfoot startups and independents who want to enter the market. Um, and we see the collapse of uh, traditional consumer advocacy, right? You're not going to shop your way out of a monopoly. Like, if you go, say you're like, oh, you know what? I like uh, low packaging in my groceries. That's better for the planet. When you go to the grocery store, you can seek out the low packaging options, but everything in your grocery store is made by two companies, Unilever and Procter & Gamble. So the low packaging version is also made by the company that makes the high packaging version. And if someone does make a local product that's, you know, that people like, if there's like some, you know, leather apron clad hipster with a wax mustache who makes the world's greatest oatmeal cookie, they're just going to buy the oatmeal cookie company. And when they do, they'll put out a press release that says, we did this because we know our consumer's value choice, right? So 
all of the things that we used to have to move politics, uh, you know, democratic reform, uh, making better consumer choices, they've all gone out the window. And so it's only by restoring competition law and the centrality of competition law that we can make everything else start to work again. And we have had in the last four years an epochal change in how we treat competition law. We've seen more action in four years than in the previous 40. And you know, most people are normies about antitrust for like good reasons, like why the world's a big place, why, why I would care? you pay attention to it? Yeah. And that's fine, like I'm not gonna shame you, but um, if you're only paying attention to the stuff at the fringes, you're not really getting a real picture, in part because the monopolists aren't going down without a fight, they're flooding the zone with bullshit. So there've been a hundred op-eds in the Wall Street Journal about how Lena Kahn, the chair of the Federal Trade Commission, is a do-nothing time waster who's spending public money and not getting anything done. They're not publishing 100 editorials about somebody who's not getting anything done, right? This is just, they're just pissed. Hmm. But if all you do is get like the, you know, your, your Facebook uncle who read that Wall Street Journal piece and then told you about it, you, you know, where will you have heard about anything else? And so part of my mission now is to help people understand that this is a very critical juncture. There is a lot of movement on this, on this area after 40 years of things being frozen solid, and we can get shit done now. It seems like a super interesting space, and it, you took the air out of the, out of the room earlier, so that was an awesome talk. And well, thank, thank you. Thank you so much for giving the time to talk oh, to us. Oh, my pleasure. It was nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, thank too. You. And safe Thanks travels. for your volunteer work here at DEF CON. It's an amazing event. Oh, happy to do so. Yeah, thanks. Thank you.